What's going on? Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button because we're so close to 500 subscribers. But today we're going to take a look at the Jonathan Hickman Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 1 reprint. This is one of my favorite Marvel omnibuses in general. So without further ado, let's take a look at the book. All right, and here is the cover of the Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman Omnibus. There may be some foreshadowing going on here. I think the artwork looks great, though. And this is a Marvel spine done right. I think this is extremely clean looking. We've got the nice volume one, and then we've got a picture of the team there as well. It's got the nice blue hue going on. I like the spine a lot. Here is the back of the book, The Life and Death of Marvel's First Family. Again, perhaps there is some foreshadowing going on here. Okay, so real quick, here's what this collects. Dark Reign, Fantastic Four 1 through 5, Fantastic Four number 570 to 588, FF number 1 through 5, and material from Dark Reign, The Cabal. So let's actually talk about the story of this book because Hickman's Fantastic Four is one of the most beloved Fantastic Four comics, and that's for a very good reason. I'm not going to spoil anything major in this overview, by the way. I'm just going to give a little bit of insight towards what the narrative and the theme of this is and why it is so popular. So immediately there is a really interesting concept and very literally a big idea that is tackled in this book by Reed Richards and that is he notices that the 616 universe is sort of in this endless cycle of conflict all because of the faults of humanity and just our inherent nature. So he endeavors to solve everything. That is his plan. It's quite simply to literally solve everything which is absolutely ambitious and he ends up doing some multiversal slash dimensional travel and meets up with a variety of other reads from other universes who also hold that same goal of solving all their problems and they do this together as the formed council of reads basically think of this like a multiversal illuminati but full of reed richards specifically and the moral compass of these Reed Richards extends across a great spectrum, so I'm sure you could see where some potential conflict might come in too. So right off the bat, I think it's clear that Hickman is playing with really big ideas, really cool concepts, and is taking what has been loved about the Fantastic Four and cranking it up so much that it actually kind of subverts it, but in a way that makes so much sense, it actually helps emphasize the themes that have always been present, like for example, the importance of family, which is really important to Hickman. Hickman's run. And speaking of that family, there's also a big focus in this book on Franklin Richards, his powers, and his relationship with his father and the rest of the family. And I think Franklin Richards is such a great character. He's been one that I really, really enjoyed in some older X-Men stuff that I read, like the Fantastic Four vs. X-Men storyline. Uh, but, you know, that is a non-sequitur, and we're not talking about that today. But maybe, maybe one day soon, because I really like that story. But I think Hickman has also publicly stated before that Franklin is his favorite Marvel character. So he does a lot of great things with him and he handles him with the care that it deserves. And one of the best things just about all the greatest Fantastic Four comics is the family dynamic between the characters. And I think Hickman captures that voice well and does some fun stuff with it and explores some really interesting things with it too. I really like Sue Storm in this story especially. She's kind of the glue holding everything together, and she's also kind of the true powerhouse of the team. And for you Spider-Man fans, he also is involved in this book here and there as sort of a recurring character, but it's another voice that Hickman just absolutely nails, and there's actually some really poignant revelations through Spider-Man in this too. And of course, what is a good Fantastic Four story without Doctor Doom? Well, have no fear, because Doctor Doom actually does play a big role in Hickman's plans, and I'm sure you're aware of that if you know what all of this is leading up to, but I won't talk about that today, and I'll let you explore that on your own as you read. And now this is not really a spoiler, uh, it's comic books first of all, so we know some of this stuff isn't permanent. It's also kind of implied on the cover, and it's implied on the back of this book as well, but there is a death of one of the members of the Fantastic Four in here, and it's a pretty impactful comic book moment. Of course, like I said, we know with comic books, you know, characters will die, and they'll come back, they'll die, and they come back, but what's emotional and what can really get you is the other characters' reactions to it, because, you know, for them, it's permanent. And so there's some really good stuff in, in here about that too, um, that like I said, I'll let you explore that on your own as well. But Hickman really has fun playing with a lot of the cosmic elements of the Fantastic Four too, and just the cosmic elements of the Marvel Universe in general. And you know, the Fantastic Four is Marvel's first family, so they've been around for decades. There's not a lot of ground that has been untouched. But, you know, Hickman sort of takes all those toys and utilizes them in a new way, in a really interesting way, and sort of 
uh, for some things, like, establishes boundaries. Like, there's some new Infinity Gauntlet rules that I guess were kind of around before that, but that Hickman really cemented in this book, too. There's awesome stuff with Celestials. There's awesome stuff with, you know, the Destroyer of Worlds, Deviants, all of that. I think you guys should really consider picking this one up. I think Hickman is one of the greatest comic book writers that's out there right now. Just conceptually, I think he's doing really good stuff, and I think he's got a firm grasp on, like, the thematic and narrative through lines of some of our favorite characters, and he does really interesting and sometimes genre-subverting things with them. But this is also just a great Fantastic Four story, so if you want to learn more about the Fantastic Four, I think this is a perfectly fine place to start. And this is also a story that is just, in general, important for the Marvel 616 universe. So please let me know if you guys are planning on picking this up. Please let me know if you've read it and you've liked it. And please like, comment, and subscribe. I will catch you guys later. I've got a lot more Omnibus videos coming soon and some comic book analysis videos. So with that, have a great rest of your day.